And because of our gratitude, let there be perfection for everyone. In Jesus' mighty name. Please your hands together for the Lord and be seated. Praise God. And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving. And the voice of them that make merry. And I will multiply them. And they shall not be few. Today your thanksgiving and my thanksgiving shall be acceptable to the Lord. I believe we are crossing over from the first half to the second half of the year. For any believer here, there shall be no carryover for you. Our running theme this morning in our Sunday services I've been serving God pays. Declare with me with faith, we want to go. Serving God pays. That means, brethren, serving God is a blessing and not a burden. Serving God is a blessing and not a burden. That means serving God is an asset of inestimable value. A blessing. Exodus 23, 25, 26. You will serve the Lord. He will bless you. Serving God is not a weight. It's a thing of joy. It's an asset for the believer. That when you serve him, he will rise up and bless you. Daze you, beautify you. And that's why, as God servant said in the first time, he says, serving God is the guaranteed maker of every man's destiny. Matthew 4, 19. Jesus said, follow me. Serve God like me. Matthew 4, 19. Serve God like me. You shall be made. Decide to serve the Lord. And today, you are changing levels. Follow me. Serve God like me. It's for your making. It's for your blessing. It's for your lifting. That means you can never serve the Lord and suffer regrets in life. I speak to somebody here, your last regret shall be the last one forever. Brethren, it pays to serve the Lord. It pays to serve the Lord. You can serve the Lord to the topmost top level in life. Serve the Lord in sanctuary. Serve the Lord wherever you are assigned. And systematically is lifting you up. We have had numerous testimonies here today among others saying a serve the Lord. And a man that lost his job. He said I lost my job and I went engaged violently serving the Lord. I engaged violently in outrages. And suddenly, the international company I was working for started pay, asked them to pay me in dollars without working for them. And I kept serving the law with all the violence of faith. He said, and suddenly, I was in church one day and God served and said, somebody is going to be restored back to his job in royal form. He kept serving. And suddenly, the international company called it should not only be restored, but made a senior manager in that company. It was restored in many dimensions. I'm speaking to somebody here. What you lost, because you are serving God, there shall be multiple restoration to you. There shall be multiple restoration for you. That means get addicted serving the Lord. And all that men are dying for shall be additions unto you. That means, friends, the month is ending. But Matthew 6, is still a reality. Serve the Lord with addiction. It's a blessing. Be addicted to serving him. And everything others are dying for shall be added to you. Serve the Lord with joyfulness and gladness of heart. Deuteronomy 48. 20, Deuteronomy 28, 47 and 48. Deuteronomy 28, 47 and 48. Serve the Lord with joyfulness and gladness of heart. He will, not, he will not let you serve your enemies for the abundance of all things. He will defend you. He will help you. He will secure you. Friends, the last contest you have shall be the last one of our destiny. Serve the Lord. He will step in for you, reward you, beautify you. Revelation 22 verse 12. He see, as you serve me, I have rewards for you. I wouldn't abandon you. I have promotions for you. I would abandon you. The 
Now, my friend, serving God pays. And it pays well. Tell your neighbor for me, serving God pays. It pays well. Job 36 verse 11. It says, you will spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure. Serving God pays. And it pays well. Serving God. And the interest of his kingdom will make, as a lifestyle, we make God turn you to a living wonder on the earth. If you don't know, look at Dr. David Oedeko. Serving God and the interest of his kingdom will make God turn you to a living wonder on the earth. He used to say to us, he said when he kept serving the Lord on motorbike, serving the Lord by foot, they would say to him, in the cabra, they will you in Yoruba, meaning that it's, it always troubles him to serve the law. He's always after everything serving the law. He said, But now, all those that were saying that to him are now serving God with him now. Looking at him ahead, friends, what eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard, is the Lord of the one that serves the law. First Corinthians 2 9. What eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard, is the Lord of the one that serves the law. He says, when you serve the Lord, I and my Father will come and set you with you. John 14, 21. When you serve the Lord, I and my Father will come and camp with you, beautify you. So please, brethren, hear me this morning. You are not wasting time serving the Lord. When you are serving the Lord, you are investing in your glorious future. You are not wasting time serving the Lord in whatever capacity. When you are serving the Lord, you are investing in your glorious future. You see, as you serve Him, there's a day coming when I will glorify my jewels. Malachi 3, 17 and 18. They that be mine, that serve me, He said, I will set them apart. I will spear them. I will separate them. I will discern between the righteous and the wicked. Malachi chapter 3, 17 and 18. He said, and then, and then he said, verse 18, he said, Then shall I return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. That means serving God will always distinguish you on the earth. Serving God will always promote you on the earth. Make a wonder out of you. And Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, verse 8. The same yesterday, today, and forever. If he has lifted men that served him before, you are the next. I say you are the next. If you are special, let your amen be the loudest one. If you are not sure, look at Bishop David Abioye. All of us have gathered from all across town to come serve his God here. Why? The evidence is clear. I will distinguish between those that serve him and those that serve him not. When you serve the Lord, it turns around your captivity like a dream. Psalm 126, verse 1 to 6. It says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, they were like them that dream. It turns your captivity like a dream. It, it, when you serve him, he wouldn't let it be a body making a blessing. When you serve him, he will distinguish you. Psalm 126, verse 1 to 6. Though you are sowing in tears, men are laughing at you. I have good news. This week you shall reap in joy. I am not hearing your amen. Somebody served the Lord like that. And kept saying the Lord. He said that God promoted. Ten times higher than where he was before. I hear the Lord saying this morning. You are looking for one. But this week. Where you are looking for one. Ten will answer for you. Hear me but brethren. Serving the Lord is a choice. For life. Not a gift. Serving the Lord is a choice for life, not a gift. Somebody may say, oh, don't mind me, he has the gift of serving God. Don't mind me, he has the gift. No, it's a choice of for life. Joshua said, Joshua 24, 15. Joshua 24, 15. He said, choose you this day whom you will serve. Tell somebody, choose whom you will serve. Say, Lord, I choose whom you will serve. Choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we have made our choice. We will serve the Lord. Choose you. It's a choice for life. When you have chosen to serve him for life, he will dwell with you for life. 
It will lift you for life. In 2 Chronicles 15, 12 to 15. A people made a choice like that. 2 Chronicles 15, 12 to 15. They entered the covenant to seek the Lord, to serve the Lord. Anyone that won't serve their God, verse 13, they put him to death. They serve the Lord. Verse 15, and it's the whole of Israel rejoice at their oath to serve the Lord for life. And they swore with all their hearts and they sought with the whole of their desires. It was found of him and that God gave them rest round about. Hallelujah. I'm here to announce by your service commitment this month, rest round about answers for somebody. The loudest amen it starts for you right now. Also hear me. Serving God, therefore, is the choice of the wise. Not just the choice, the choice of the wise. Highest level of wisdom. Because know it, brethren, serving the Lord, God is not looking for who to use. God is looking for who to raise. He's not looking for who to use. He's looking for who to bless. Not looking for who to use. Looking for who is going to enlarge. Blessed is the one that chooses to serve the Lord. Psalm 65 verse 4 and verse 6 says, By terrible things in righteousness he will answer us. It's the choice of the wise. It's not looking for who to use, it's looking for who to bless. When you serve him, he will bless you forever. Exodus 25, 23, 25 and 26. Exodus 23, 25 and 26. It's looking for who to serve him and he will bless you there. Serve him, marriage will meet you there. Serve him, promotion will meet you there. It's the choice of the wise. Why? God is not looking for who to engage, but he's looking for who to make whole. Who to make whole? Make you whole. You can't serve God and serve sickness. Proverbs 13, 17. Proverbs 13, 17. It says, a wicked messenger will fall into mischief, but a faithful ambassador that serves the Lord will be healthy. Whatever sickness followed you here dies here today. When you are serving God, you can't serve sickness. You are entitled to be healthy when you are an ambassador for the Lord. Also, God is looking for, not looking for who to take advantage of, but looking for who to take advantage of the blessedness of his kingdom. God is not looking for who to take advantage of, but who will take advantage of the blessedness of his kingdom. Enjoy the glory of his kingdom. Enjoy supernatural tolerance in his kingdom. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. From verse 1 to 4. Diligently hearken and serve him. He will set you on high above the nations of the earth. Hallelujah. This week, they will send for you from the palace. That amen doesn't sound like a believer. Lift your right hand and say, I've chosen to serve the Lord. Make it loud, I've chosen to serve the Lord. Shout it, I've chosen to serve the Lord. Quickly, therefore, since we have all chosen to serve the Lord, what are the avenues for serving the Lord for life? What are the avenues of serving the Lord that will enter into that all today to serve Him for the rest of our lives? One principal way is through prayers and fasting. Prayers and fasting. Throughout this month, in our teachings, we have kept hearing of a particular woman. In Luke chapter 2, verse 37, a widow got married early, was a virgin, but for the most part of her life, she was serving God. They're talking about the widow, Luke 2, 37. He said, the widow, 84 years, departed the temple for she served God with prayers and fasting night and day. Say loud, amen. For all her life, one thing she kept registering in Zion, Prayers and fasting. Prayers and fasting. And God gave her longevity. God gave her a testimony in scriptures for life. Friends, your service of this month shall be forever. That amen is weak. When they are talking of living winners that were made through prayers and fasting, with your loudest amen, your name shall be among them. In our prayers and fasting, very importantly, brethren, we need to pray for our co-believers in Zion. Pray for believers like you and me on a daily basis. You know why? In Genesis, two, verse, Genesis chapter 2, 
talking about Genesis chapter 4, verse 9. Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel. He says, And the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Hello, brethren. As long as you are not your brother's keeper, you will end up as your brother's killer. But when you pray for your brother, you can't be his killer. He said, I'm not my brother's keeper. So he killed him. God is saying, to sustain the body, let's constantly pray for one another. Let's constantly trust God for the best for one another. As you are praying for your family, also pray for your friend. Job prayed for his friend. Job 42 verse 10. Job prayed for his friends. And God gave to Job twice what he had before. He prayed for his friends. Especially members of the household of God. Ephesians 6 verse 10. Especially members of the household of God. He said, let's lift up. Let's pray for one another. Let's, let's pray for one another. Hallelujah. Also, James chapter 5 verse 16. James 5 16. He said, let's pray for one another. Pray for one another. Ephesians 6 18. Ephesians 6 18. He said, praying always. With all prayer and supplication in the spirit, watching the outward perseverance and making supplication for all the saints. All the saints in Zion, all members of the household of God together with you. Let's pray for one another. Pray for their marriages. Pray for their children. Pray for their health. What you make happen for someone, God will make it happen for you in multiplied dimensions. Let me hear your amen. We're praying for one another, fellow believers in Zion. You don't need to know whether he's tempted to explain to his problem or not. Galatians 6.2 Galatians 6.2 says, let's bear one another's borders. Let's bear one another's borders. By that, we are fulfilling the law of Christ. We are fulfilling the law of Christ. So brethren, you don't need to say, but he didn't come and tell me he has a problem. He doesn't need to tell you. The love of God will tell you to reach out to your brother. That grace we ask for somebody here today. I am not hearing you. Amen. Also, in our prayers and fasting, let's pray for the word of the Lord upon this altar at all times. Our Father and the faith here would always say to us, every time we appear in Zion, let's pray for the service. Every service as we come. Every service as we come. Every service as we come. Let's pray that the power of God in his word, the word of righteousness, we continually answer for everyone. In John chapter 17, verse 17, it says, Sanctify them through thy truth, for thy word is truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. So we we'll pray for the sanctification of God's word. We we'll pray for the sanctity of God's word. We we'll pray for the righteousness of God's word. We we'll pray that God's word will cleanse us as it comes from this altar. In John chapter 15, verse 3, it says, Pray. For the clean wall, that through the word spoken to you, you will be made clean. You will be made cleansed. You will be made pure. You will be made righteous. From now, every word that comes from this altar will sanctify you and me. I did hear your loudest amen. In Ephesians 5 verse 26, Ephesians 5 verse 26 says, Sanctify them and cleanse them by the washing of the water of his wall. So we are praying, Lord, let the words from this altar continually sanctify us sanctify us so we are praying Lord sanctify the word anoint your servants of this altar and as we pray every time they stand Hebrews chapter 5 13 and 14 Hebrews chapter 5 13 and 14 it says the skillfulness of the word of righteousness will be answered upon the altar the skillfulness it says through full age and it said skillfulness answers to you through the word of righteousness. I declare today that shall be our Lord from now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm not hearing your amen. So we serve the Lord, pray for fire on the altar, pray for righteousness on the altar. We serve the Lord, praying also for our brethren. Secondly, how do we serve the Lord? Reaching out to the lost all around us as a way of life. Constantly reaching out to the lost. Constantly reaching out to the lost. Constantly reaching out to the lost. He says, for if you don't do that, Jesus said, you are not abiding by my command. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Matthew 28, 18 to 20 is a command. 
Jesus said, All power has been given unto me. Now I command you, go forth. And then every nation, every place, preaching the word. I command you, preaching the word. I command you, preaching the word. So when you go by this divine command, you become a commander on the earth. Say Lord, Amen. When you go by this command, you become a commander over sickness and disease. The Lord says, Amen. As you respond to this divine command, like we have kept seeing the last few days, or the last few weeks, every time, service after service, souls shall be rushing in, translated from darkness to light, and there is joy in heaven over one soul that gives their life to Jesus. Our Father in the faith said earlier this morning, he said, don't bring an offering. They didn't say there's joy in heaven over your offering. But bring a soul offering. There's joy in heaven over one soul that gives his life to Jesus. Between now and next Sunday, one major soul standing in the faith shall answer to you and me in this place. I didn't hear your loudest amen. I didn't hear a resounding amen. I didn't hear an explosive amen. But let me register. Why would it be a challenge to anyone to preach the gospel at every opportunity. Well, it will be a challenge to anyone. Brethren, things to one thing to watch out for is shame. It is shame that won't let you want to preach the gospel in the bus. It's shame that won't let you to stand in the open, open, open space to preach the gospel. But Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. It says, I am not ashamed. Because brethren, once you are ashamed of the gospel, you will end up defamed on the earth. Once you are ashamed of the gospel, you will end up defamed on the earth. Once you are ashamed of the gospel, you will end up disgraced on the earth. Once you are ashamed of the gospel, you will end up dishonored on the earth. But the Lord says, if you honor me before them, I will also honor you. Say loud, amen. Somebody today, the best honor you have ever seen in life will answer for you before this month ends. That amen is not loud enough. He said, let's go out quickly to the highways, the byways. Luke chapter 14, verse 21 and 23. Go out quickly. To the highways, don't be ashamed. Go out quickly to the byways. Get every one of them to come in. Get every one of them to come in. And as they come, things will answer for you. My last station, there was a time when we started going out like that. I would go out with my son early on Saturday morning and our team. And one of the days, as we just arrived at the location, I just disappeared. By the time they saw me, I came out with two families. He got back home. He said, Mommy, you better warn your husband. Because when we arrive, he will just disappear into people's houses and come back with souls. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Because I'm not, you are not ashamed. I declare God will glorify you like never before. Yesterday we were out on the field. The first two weeks we have been going from place to place. But I said to our team, let's put together an outreach. Let's put together a major team, a, 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 a program. And God helped us. We arrived there, went from place to place to place, gathered people, and we had about 200 people gathered to us on our team. Got to that, to that outreach. By the time we ministered, God gave us 54 souls in the place yesterday. If you are excited, we will put your hands together for the Lord. When you are not ashamed, God will do for you things he has never done before. I declare today, shame has ended in your life finally. I am not hearing your loudest amen. Also something to watch out for, why you will not reach out, go the full length for the Lord, is lack of commitment. Take it for granted. If I don't do it, somebody else will do it. No. Every man will give an account of his own destiny. Seek ye first is individuality. Seek ye first is a message of individuality. Luke 6, Matthew 6.33, seek ye first individually. Every man will register his own soul at the end of this season. So, brethren, that flyer they have given you, don't let it slip inside your Bible. Let it answer to a soul. Say loud, amen. Every week, let it answer to a soul. 
commitment. God say, God, I must register my part. I must lay my own part. We are privileged to be in Lagos for a meeting during the weekend. And I sat by Pastor David Oedeko yesterday in one of the sessions. And we were talking. And I said to him, when are you going back? He said, I'm going back on Saturday morning. I said, so you will not go out for the outreach? He said, no. He said, because I knew I was coming to Lagos for a meeting, I've made sure I've done my own outreach on Monday, on Tuesday before I came, so that they can register on Sunday morning. Come and say commitments. Say ladder commitments. Say the ladder's commitments. Grace to stay committed to deliver your own lot. Let your amen be the loudest one. What are the returns of spiritual stewardship? What are the returns? What are the benefits? Friends, number one benefit is divine favor. Divine favor. When you do it for the Lord, Bible says, you favor the righteous cause. Then God will favor you. Psalm 102, verse 13 to 15. When you favor the cause of his kingdom. Psalm 102, verse 13 to 15. He said, when you favor the righteous cause, the time to favor you is now. Favor simply means divine partiality. Favor simply means reward from where you have done no labor. Other men have labored, you have entered into their labor. I'm speaking to somebody, your labor this season, the kind of favor that no one in your generation has ever seen. Receive it this week in the name of Jesus Christ. Also, it brings you divine honor. Divine honor. When there's multitude of people, Bible says it's the king's honor. In Proverbs 14, 28. Honor. When you are, you are involved in gathering multitude of people, God will honor you. That means he will send a company up from heaven to make sure that things go well with you. Isaiah 3.10. He says, say it to the righteous. Things must go well with you. Can I hear your amen? You will not see destruction. You will not see shame and reproach. I'm not hearing your amen, no. 1 Samuel 2.30. 1 Samuel 2.30. The Bible says, because you have honored the Lord, God will honor you. We have eight couples, new marriages, celebrated today. The honor and the beauty in marriage will answer for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Honor the Lord serving him. You will never suffer for children. I'm not hearing an amen from somebody. So you enjoy divine favor. You enjoy divine honor. Also, you enjoy abundant life. Abundant life. Graceful life. Glorious life. Overflowing blessings. Job 36 verse 11. He said we bind, another translation says, he said we bind the floors with overflowing and the things that bring it, that are hidden from you, it will, blast, it, will, it will plaster your life with it. You will spend your days in prosperity, abundance of all things, and your years in pleasure. He will usher you to a realm of overflowing blessings. Abundant life. Lack and want has added in somebody's life. I'm not hearing your loudest amen. I'm particularly on this day of next levels. I'm here to announce to you, whatever level you are today shall be your lowest level in life. I am not hearing your amen. Oh. It is next levels banquets. And God is saying, what exactly is next levels? Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 3. It says you have gone around that mountain long enough. It is time to break forth into new levels. Next level simply means speedy breaking forth. Beyond all barriers. Speedy breaking forth. Speedy breaking forth. Our father in the first said it earlier. He said succeeding. Supernaturally, with highest orders, succeeding speedily, breaking forward speedily. So your, your level now must change. God is saying, you have gone on that mountain long enough, there is a time to break forth into another realm. Another realm of success. Another realm of breakthrough. Another realm of liberation. Another realm of transformation. 
The Lord has amen. It is yours. Breaking out of the limitations. Next level means, brethren, you have celebrated knowledge already. It's time for you to be a creator of knowledge. It doesn't have to be the same way everybody is doing it. Hello. There's no chemistry in heaven. There's no biology in heaven. Hello. There's no, there's no engineering in heaven. Whatever is there today, somebody created it. God is saying, you have begged that one long enough. It's time for you to break into a realm where nobody has entered. Somebody today, you are breaking to that next level. That amen is not loud enough. Also, next level means gaining access to your high places. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 to 19, he said, I will rejoice in the Lord my God. And then verse 19 says, Ah, it will cause me to ride upon my high places. Walk upon my high places. Enter the realm of my high places. That means, brethren, you will go from ordinary living to quality living. You go from ordinary performance to excellent performance. You go from regular manifestation to super outstanding manifestations. I am not hearing your amen if you are there. That means, brethren, your level will change. You were a beggar before, but after today you become an influential person in society. Joseph went from the prison. He went to the palace. Not just there, he began to teach senators. Today is a transgenerational landmark. I'm speaking to somebody that forgot you in the prison, forgot you in the backyard. But this week you are coming out to limelight. I am not hearing your violence. Amen if you are a believer. Next level means transformation like a dream in a twinkling of an eye. First Corinthians 15, 52. Being changed like a dream in a twinkling of an eye. We shall be changed. I'm not hearing your amen. I'm not hearing your louder amen. For the path of a righteous one is like a shining light that shines more and more and more and more. Proverbs 4 verse 18. As I close quickly. How do you access your next levels? How do you settle your next levels? One key thing, a life of gratitude. Gratitude. Prompt gratitude. Prompt appreciation. You see one thing, you celebrate God. You see another thing, you glorify God. Prompt gratitude. Intense gratitude. That one leper came back, he was made whole. Jeremiah 30, 19-21. They will out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the rest of them that make merry. And I will multiply them. I will glorify them. Prompt gratitude. Whenever you see something, just do your hallelujah anyhow. Whether they squire or not. Let the people praise thee, O God. You let all the people praise thee. The ash shall ye that increase. Psalm 67, verse 5 to 7. Psalm 67, verse 5 to 7. So when you are a constant praise in life, you will never be frustrated in life. Say loud, amen. Number two, all way you can enjoy next levels by taking advantage of prophetic instructions. Taking advantage of prophetic directives. He said by a prophet, he brought Israel out. Hebrews 12, Hosea 12, 12, 3. By a prophet, he brought them out. Hebrews 7, 7. Without all contradiction, there's a higher vessel that keeps bringing you out. Take advantage. Because when you connect to prophets, Respond to prophetic instructions, you will prosper no matter how many devils are in town. Let me hear your amen. Lastly, how do you enter next levels and settle there? By camping with the revelation of God's word. Camping with the revelation of God's word. Whatever God says, just do it. The revelation of his word is the gateway to next levels. If God reveals it, settle with it. If God says it, settle with it. Diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. And I will set you on high. Above all the nations of the earth. Bless you come to you and overtake you. I have good news for somebody. Whatever level they say you will never get to. After today you are going to surpass that level. Whatever they say your hand will never touch. 
I'm saying before Sunday morning, they will send for you and deliver it into your hand. I'm saying to somebody, you have been looking at it, looking like, where will I reach there? I'm speaking by a prophetic encounter as God's servant comes forth. I'm speaking this month of June will not end until your story changes. Wave your hands and let your amen be the loudest. Brethren, wherever you are seated, the word has come forth. You have gone around that mountain long enough. Enough is enough. You have been beaten on the ground long enough. You have waited long enough. I want to change someday. Waiting is wasting, except you take the appropriate step. Waiting is wasting. You have been waiting. Where will my helper come? I have good news for you. David said, my help comes from the Lord. My help comes from the Lord. The helper is here in the house here this morning. All you need is to surrender to him. Jesus says, come unto me, you that you are helpless. Come unto me, you that you are hopeless. Come unto me, you that you are challenged. Come unto me now and I will give you rest. For except a man be born again, except a man be born of God, born of the water of his word, he cannot enjoy the kingdom of God. I have good news for you. Everyone under the sound of my voice that you are looking for salvation, your miracle of salvation will hit you right here now. In the name of Jesus Christ. All you need, wherever you are, to decide to make Jesus the Lord of your life. He will change your story, change your destiny, rewrite your story. If you are that person saying, Jesus, save me. Jesus, deliver me. Jesus, change me. I want to be born again today. I want to serve for the rest of my life. Rise to your feet wherever you are. I want to pray with you. Rise to your feet wherever you are. I want to pray with you. Rise to your feet. Rise to your feet. God bless you. Rise to your feet, church. Are you clapping? Church, are you clapping? I want to make up my mind. I want to make up my mind to see Jesus. Make up my mind to enjoy God. Make up my mind to live right. Church, are you clapping? Rise to your feet. Also, you are there this morning. At one time, you gave your life to Jesus, but you lost your salvation. Satan took it from you. You lost your joy. You lost your beauty. You want restoration today. Today is your day of restoration. Rise to your feet. Let me pray with you. Join them quickly. Rise to your feet. Let me pray with you. Join them quickly. God bless you. God bless you. You are lost. You want to be found today. You are disconnected. You want to be reconnected today. Rise to your feet. Rise to your feet. All those standing, pick your bag and Bible and just keep coming. Pick your bag and Bible and just keep coming. Pick your bag and Bible and just keep coming. Church, are you clapping? Pick your bag and Bible. And just keep coming. And just keep coming. There's fire on the mountain. Church, are you clapping? Just keep coming. Jesus, rescue me. Jesus, save me. Jesus, give me a brand new life. The way you clap for them, that's how they will clap for you this year. Bigger for Jesus. Bigger for Jesus. Just keep coming. I don't want to be poor again. I don't want to suffer again. I don't want to remain under attack again. Jesus save me. Just keep coming. Jesus set me free. Just keep coming. Jesus deliver me. Let's keep coming. He will meet you at the point of your need there this morning. He will meet you at the point of your need there this morning. Don't miss this miracle of salvation. Don't miss this miracle of salvation. Don't miss this miracle of salvation. There's redemption here this morning. Just come. Just come. Just come. Just come. Just come. Just come. Help is here this morning. Help is here. Finally, maybe you are here and you want to rededicate your life to Jesus. You want to say, Lord, I want a new beginning. Today is your day. I want a new beginning. Join them quickly before I pray. Join them quickly before I pray. Rise and join them quickly before I pray. You want a new beginning from today. I want a new beginning with Jesus. I want to start afresh with Jesus. I don't want an old life. He said, all things are past, all things become new. Join them quickly. My friends in front, Lift up your right hand to Jesus. Lift it very high. And say this prayer after me, Lord Jesus. Say louder, Lord Jesus. I come to you this